Okay, 10 students we have. I think it's enough. I promise you uh, that today we have little extraordinary classes. Uh, in my opinion, I need to spend more time to explain you how you have to handle with the skull topography, uh, skull images, uh, because up and lower limb, I think you have no problem. It's quite a simple topic. You have just to be able to recognize the main parts and that's all. Uh, the skull topography more difficult. And as I understand, a group with some problem. That's why uh, let's try to start from the beginning. And what any kids doing in the beginning, they try to draw the pictures. Yeah. As example, I'll take the Uh, this label it scan slice it label is scan as uh, first uh, as I understand a few of you miss uh, the sign below the edge scan this you can scroll the page downward and you can see all the sign it's more than you need but it's a good practice for you too and if you will scroll to the end, you can see the same images, but without the sign. So after you become familiar with the sign, you can go to that pictures and try to recognize the same object without any labeling. Step by step. And let me emphasize that this is the long way and it's very difficult to do it from the first step, that's why you have just to keep practice uh, with different plane. I uh, don't recommend you to start immediately from anyone, but the classical view you have to be able to recognize the horizontal, the vertical, the frontal. I'll explain you only how you have to do it with the horizontal and give you a few examples, uh, some clinician cases. Uh, I'm sure that we can't finish today upper limb. That's why next time you have to prepare both upper and lower limb. And I will assess you very quickly upper and lower limb bones. And we need to finish the uh, bony system. First, what I recommend to do for all of my students, it's to draw the pictures. It's help you not only uh, to improve your memories, but to help you uh, to give some structure of this uh, object and help you to understand the relationship between different parts of the object. And the base of the skull, the horizontal section, we will start from the upper level, on the level of frontal bone. And we have like frontal bone, something like that. Yeah. And what we have in the middle here. In the middle of frontal bone. What is it here? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Here, what we have. Yeah. 31, what is that? 41. It's my bone. Yeah, it's a part of etmoid bone. This is the part of etmoid bone. It's a crib reform plate. Crib reform plate and crystal in the middle. Yeah. After that, we go in. We go in one. We go in here. And our favorite bone in butterfly in shape or bed. Unpaired single bone in the center of base of the skull. What is that? What is the net next to him? Sorry? Infraorbital margin. I ask you the name of bone, you give me infraorbital margin. This is the sphenoid bone. Sphenoid bone. This is, this is the sphenoid. This one is frontal. This one atmoid. I choose the wrong color. 
after that i choose let it be this one uh, it's a little bit like that starts after that continue here and here here the same what is that zygomatic bone temporal bone <laughs> Temporal bone, not zygomatic. Oh. Maxilla. Maxilla in the base of the skull, in the middle. That's why you spend not enough time with atlases. And again, not with atlases, draw your own pictures. We are following the, sorry, we are following the horizontal section like that. Frontal. This is a little bit lower than frontal. This, uh, here we have sphenoid, here temporal, and what we have on the back? Occipital, Occipital. bone. Occipital, Occipital bone. I choose like orange. Let it be. Occipital bone going like that. And this is the big opening. Yeah? Um, Foramen magnum, yeah. Foramen magnum. Foramen magnum. Foramen magnum. Oc occipital bone, this is foramen magnum. First of all, you have to clear understand this design. If you're talking about yeah. horizon horizontal section. But again, we are talking about upper section on the level of frontal bone. If you will be moves a few step lower, what will we have here instead of frontal bone? what we have below the frontal bone. What we, which bone we have below the frontal? Group 16, wake yeah. up, maxilla. Yeah, that's why you have to clear. Then, then, then you use, then you use, let me change. Then you use, uh, the pictures like this, you have to clear understand the level of section. And after that, first of all, in your brain, step by step to build macro design of this. If you see, like here, you can be absolutely clear, this is the frontal bone. You can see here the etmoidal at my bone. bone, you can see the orbital part of frontal bone. It's like the uh, upper part of the orbit, actually. You can see even the shadow of the muscle of orbit. Yeah, those. Uh, after that, after that, again, I go to my finally to my jump board. After that, I try to draw the same. Which color instead to use? Here, those I'm sure that this is the frontal bone. Yeah. And what is that again? Temporal bone. Temporal. No. Red bone. Sphenoid. Bone. That's Phenoid. why. That's why you made the mistake. Because if you can't recognize immediately the name of the bone, you can't recognize the smaller part of this bone. Those, again, keep this order of the bone. We already draw it before, like that. Like kids' art. But you have to do it to clear, understand the position of each of the bone. After that, you never made the mistake in the parts of the bone. Because if I'll follow, if I'll continue here, let's say choose another color, let it be, I know, blue one. Okay, and I to try now uh, to draw the smaller part of each of this bone. After, yeah, uh, after I absolutely clear with the, with the exactly the bones. Now, what is that? Temporal. Which part now? The next question. Petrous part. Or temporal bone. More precisely, it's not only, it's not an entire petrous part. 
that's why that's why no one got five because this is a theoretical question which originated from the part of the bone i can help you to build the entire skull if you clear understand the edge bone separately if you can't you'll be made a mistake like that this is pyramid because the entire entire petrous part is here this is entire petrous part But I ask it you only about this area. This is pyramid. Now, next, who can tell me what is that? Mastoid process. Mastoid. Great, mastoid process. Together with the pyramid, they build up the petrous part exactly. We don't care about the squamous part of the external side, we are talking about CT scan. On the CT scan, the biggest part you can recognize from there. Uh, temporal bone, it's petrous part and, and uh, pyramid, excuse me, and uh, mastoid process. Now, after we find them on our scammer, let's go to the real images. Mm -hmm. And I just to follow my design from my pictures. I just to follow my design and I try to find the same here. Those, what is that? Pyramid. 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 The first step. What is this behind? Mastoid process. Yeah. This is the mastoid process. Those I built two smaller objects, smaller than bones. But again, I, I, I didn't try immediately to recognize some particular small pieces of this scan. Only after, I'm sure this is the pyramid again, but I start from theory, what I can find inside the pyramid. Please mute your microphone if, 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 you, if you comment something for your colleague. Those, uh, this is the pyramid. What we can find inside pyramid? We can find, first of all, from outside going, and it's not number 44, it's external acoustic meatus, which lead to the inner uh, middle ear, excuse me, because inner ear is here. 45, it's part of inner ear. We don't care which exactly now, because the inner ear will be studied next semester. Now you have just to be able to recognize the main part. And you don't have immediately to recognize the biggest, uh, the smallest object. But to recognize the smaller one, first of all, first step you have to do to find the bone, to find the part of this bone, and after that, on the third step, to recognize the smaller one. Let's do the same with this area. Again, this blue area, what is that? Remind me. Bone. Bone. Sphenoid bone. Sphenoid bone. After you absolutely clear this is sphenoid bone, you can try to recognize the parts. And the, what is that? How we call this part of sphenoid? Greater wing. Greater wing. Greater wing. Greater wing. Greater. Today much better. Yeah? This is the greater wings. How we call that central part of sphenoid bone? No, Celia Turcica in the top. I ask him about ex part. Yeah, it's a the, the not basilar part we call this. According body. to the cell body, thank you, finally. This is the body of sphenoid bone. After you done that, this is the body of sphenoid bone. Please, can you move your microphone away from the book? After you're done, this is the body of sphenoid bone. You can try to recognize the smaller object. Right? But again, you have to clear, imagine the level of these slices, how it passes through each part of the body, through the upper portion of the body or through the lower portion of the body. Uh, that's why to, 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 to try to fix it, we will move one step down, actually two steps. Here you can see a, a two closer 
slices, but they from the lower part of the body. And what we can see here on the lower part of the body of sphenoid bone, what is that? Who can tell me? One. Yeah, this is how it looks like the sphenoid sinus, if you remember. Yes. From theory, again, every time you have to do the step from theory. If you remember that the body of sphenoid bone is empty inside, you can find this. If you forgot this, how you can do that? That's why I give you the question very often. What we have inside the body of sphenoid bone? What we have inside the frontal bone? My question, very popular. We stuck at a lot sinus, of you. Sphenoid uh, frontal sinus. Here you can see again yes. the part of frontal sinus. But this is on, on the back, it's sphenoidal sinus. But let me again, uh, let me point out that you can see that sphenoidal sinus consists from two parts here, divided by some sept, sphenoidal sept, and they odd, they're not even. It's a real scan from the person that's left one is bigger than the right one. It happens, yeah, asymmetric. And in, in, inside you can also find some additional like sept uncompleted. That's why it's not like, like in Minecraft, yeah? Absolutely quadrant room, sphenoidal sinus. No, it it's can be some sometimes quite strange in shape. But you ensure that this is the sphenoid bone on the middle we have, and this is the sphenoid sinus. No another object you can find here. Because you start from theory, and this is the human anatomy, not elephant, neither snake. And here we can find only sphenoidal sinus in normal. In normal. After that, and, and, and again, laterally, what we have here, how we call this, what is that? Greater wing of a sphenoid. Greater wing of sphenoid. Greater wing of sphenoid. Yeah, exactly. Still greater wings of sphenoid. And uh, again, because this is section, I told you, a little bit lower, we move a few steps down. Let's try to fix the dorsal side. We can't find here like the pyramid with the internal acoustic minatus because it, we leave it upward, but we can see here some emptiness. What is that? Mastoid cells. Mastoid. It's, yeah, it's still our mastoid process because it's quite long and moves downward. And you can palpate it behind it. It's, 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 it's becoming narrower here. In the right side, you can see in some level, it's even separates some, some, a few cells away from the main portion and not same as the right side, but again, yeah. On the same person, we have different design of mastoid cells on the right and the left side. But this is actually the issue you have to comment as, as individual features. But you, you, you absolutely clear this is the mastoid cells. And this is the design, the base of the skull lower than the uh, middle ear and inner ear below. That's how step by step you have to build this brick by brick, step by step, build this marker of design. And let me again point out we, 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 half of our, we are talking only about the horizontal section, the same way you have to do with the frontal and the sagittal. But first step, you have to clearly understand where exactly the session passes through, which parts it's heated. Here again, we, 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 we are lower than the frontal bone. We can find just the nasal part of the frontal bone here. On the, and what is that? It's moid bone. Sinus. Yeah. This is exactly it's moid bone. And this is absolutely classical design of upper level of nasal cavity, frontal bone or frontal sinus. In the front, here you can see the part of frontal sinus too etmoidal bone with etmoidal cells and you see on the middle and 
behind we can find the big sphenoidal sinus separated mm -hmm. by sphenoidal sept on two part two chamber but this is exactly again to complete this this is the part of occipital bone if you Pterygoid remember process. not pterygoid process pterygoid process we can find low wear and this is below the base of the skull this is occipital bone mm -hmm. again again first you have to back to our baby's art and to find what we can find oh, here occipital, condyle. occipital bone not condyle because here the base and this is the clevus of occipital bone mm. if you call this occipital yes. condyle it's mean you have to back to theory you have to read about structure of occipital bone the, the place of occipital bone if in the skull and you know yes. the this is the clevus in front of foramen magnum we have clevus this is the lateral part and in lower part of an external base of the skull of lateral part we can find the condyle but not inside that's how you have you have to do this step from theory to primitive pictures from primitive pictures to the real cases to the real skull it's a long and difficult way but who told you that it's easy to study in university that's why I just keep working and again every time a few of you asking me about function function of this of those it's very good but you try but but again to the function will be back in the respective chapter if this object we need for muscle attachment we'll be back to this object in the muscle system if this we need to the inner ear structure we'll be back to this when we'll talk about spatial senses now you have to be concerned only by the structure because it's too much for you if you'll be try to think about the function of this object I'll give you some time the function as example to help you to understand that for what you need to study them. Okay, we're done with this again. If if you miss some object here right now, it's not a problem. But if you find, for example, the mastoid process, try to find this mastoid process in any scan. Try to scroll this upward till then and downward till then to clear understand the design of mastoid process and this is will be good stuff for the beginning if you done the sphenoid uh, sinus okay scroll it till the end here and till the end here don't try to recognize all the point immediately in one scan Try to recognize the bigger object and to scroll them up and down, maybe even jump on the frontal section, on the sagittal to find the same object and to complete in your brain, in your memories, the design of this object from different scale, from different view. Back to the atlas in that moment. Same with your orbit, the easiest way. Try to understand the design of the orbit from the up the low in this scan in this case there are no lower part of the orbit because it's only uh, on the base of the skull without the and, and the upper portion you can see here maxillary sinus for the complete orbit uh, uh, we need to to, to, to change uh, the cases but again it's 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 just the way which you need to pass through and step by step th that's for what I give you this example because if you go into the real cases, you have some particular slices and uh, you're confused if you don't have experience in the, in the, in the, in the uh, scan like that. Let, let's go back to our jump board. Here you can see again, one step, we're moving, we're moving back upward. One step up, upward, we can see here the bigger cavity of frontal sinus on the top here again consists from two chamber and it's variable the right side bigger than left side and quite odd here you can see this small part of superior conch 
and this is exactly we already jump almost on the uh, internal base of the skull to the internal base of the skull but again here we can find the upper portion of sphenoidal sinus because i follow this from the lower section i can clear find the mastoid cells because i follow them from the lower section now on that level i can easily recognize the external acoustic meatus the part of bony labyrinth i don't care which exactly now and on the right side here 46 i can see like the upper part of body of sphenoid bone and what we can find on upper part of body of sphenoid bone who can help me yeah, finally. Finally, we reach our Sela Turtica. I don't care about the full design mm -hmm. of Sela Turtica, but here you can see the middle side, middle part of Sela Turtica. How we call the central part of Sela Turtica. How we call this central red dot? Hypophysial canal. Hypophysial canal. Not canal. Hypophysial fossa. 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 Yeah, this is 46 hypophysial force. That's how you have to done with that. And again, I remember what what I have on the back of the hypophysial force. I have dorsum cellae. This is the base, wherever that no sign here. But I remember from theory behind the hypophysial force in the structure of cellae turtica, we have dorsum cellae. This is the base of dorsum cell. Tuberculum cell, I still can't uh, see here because uh, here we're still on the lower level of cell turtica, and this is the upper part of sphenoidal uh, sinus. But I'm sure that one or two steps above, I can find the tuberculum cell. Moreover, I remember that here we have, uh, how we call this again, this, Sphenoid bone. Sphenoid bone, yeah. But now I want to ask a little wider. How we call the question from previous chapter, topic. How we call this part of the base of the skull? Real cranial fossa. Oh, now you are a great specialist after previous chapter, yeah, after previous topic. <laughs> yeah. Proud of you. This is the middle cranial fossa. Yeah. And now I'm sure without any problem, again, if you remember theory, you can tell me. I delete this. How we call that connection between the orbit and middle cranial fossa, this passage. Orbital feature. Yeah, that's exactly how it looks like. This is the part of superior orbital fissure. Yes. Again, if you remember in theory, you can find that on the CT scan, step by step. But this step again, I done only after I complete the bony structure. I complete the big parts of the bone. Only after that, I can go to the smaller object, to some passage, or some canals, cella turtica, blah blah blah. If you miss the bone, you never find the answer on the question, what is that? That's how you have to do that. Okay, we have uh, 10 minutes before before the break. Okay, what's happened? Why why is some person going out and, and uh, connect again? Uh, do problem. Okay, 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 okay. Maybe because of holiday today. This is another regime. This is another regime. And this is again uh, how 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 you can you can fix it. If you see the brain, Lewis, you sure that this is something like the upper one of the upper section. And again, what is that? It's more the bone. It's more the lower part, but lower part. Why I'm sure that this is the lower mm. part? Because I can see here the orbit. Mm, orbit. And I can't see here the frontal bone. 
I can see only the upper part of external nodes here. Plus it's, it's, it's somewhere here on the middle of like, like on that line. That's the first step I have to do. I have to be, I have to find the level. And after that, following that level from my theory, from my memories, from my knowledges, I try to be, this is the lower part of the sinus. And this is again, Sphenoidal sinus. Sphenoidal sinus. This is another regime. It's not good to recognize the bony structure. This is good to recognize the brain object, uh, parts, uh, brain structure. But some some of the parts of the bone you can you can try to find here. Another again, but it's quite interesting because it's lower. And what we can find here again, you can see the huge. Cristagalli. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Are you no, sure? No, 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 no. It is not Cristagalli. That's why. It's not Cristagalli. Do you see here the orbit? Maxillary sinus. Yeah, this is maxillary sinus. Yes. This, this section passes below the orbit here. You can find Cristagalli here. This uh, section here. After that, you can. No frontal bone, of course, this is the maxilla. Yes. And again, what we can find, let's start from the middle. What we can find in nasal cavity on this level. Can we find here at more cells? No, because at more cells is upper level of nasal cavity, mm. but we moves downward. And what we can find on the middle and lower level of nasal cavity, who can tell me? So the lower we have warm, warmer. It's and middle we have perpendicular plate. Um, yeah. The last last statement I prefer. Again, on the section like that, you can't uh, be ensured this is warmer or perpendicular plate because both of them, and warmer and perpendicular plate, are parts of nasal sept. That's why the bet better in these cases to call this is nasal sept on the middle. It's not straight again, very often it's happened. And even after the trauma or even without it's individual, you can see clear. But what we have beside the nasal sept, what is that? Olfactory fossa, olfactory no. part. No. Nasal conca. Conca. Yeah. That's how it looks like. This is the biggest lower nasal conch. Any path, any emptiness, they dark. Absolutely black in the in the city scan. In normal. In normal. But these pictures has some trap. And we will try to follow this trap. Again, this uh, we find out that this is there lower part of nasal cavity. Nasal sept we distinguish easy. Nasal sept we can distinguish in the upper part too. In the modal cells level, we also can find the nasal sept because it goes from up to down completely. But here nasal con. But what we have behind the nasal cavity? This emptiness. What is that? No, no, because we leave the sphenoidal sinus in upper level. Foramen lestrum. No, 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 no. What we have, what we have behind the nasal cavity? Behind sinus frontalis. Them. Sinus frontalis here behind the glabella. Excuse me, not behind the nasal cavity. Sinus uh, Simple question. Behind the nasal cavity, what we have? Nasopharynx. 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 This is already pharynx. This is the pharynx. And this is a very popular mistake uh, for the student. Mm -hmm. Because you remember somewhere here we have mm -hmm. a sphenoidal sinus. And very popular yeah. uh, answer on that question. Oh, this is sphenoidal sinus. If you miss the level of section. Sphenoidal sinus, 
कभी ना निखिल आया तो उसके बाद भी दिक्कत हो रहा था ना दौड़ के आया वॉइस इफ यू वॉन्ट टू टॉक यूर नेब उस कैन यू मुथ योर माइक्रोफोन थैंक यू खुश those again we find out that this is the maxillary sinus yeah. and what is that little differ in design i told you this is pictures of little trap this is maxillary sinus too but Let's this is like the, this is okay and here we have maxillitis inflammation that's how it looks like this the healthy maxillary sinus absolutely empty inside and on the ct scan it looks like big black area but in the case of some fluid pus mucus you can see like here this is the fluid and because the scan goes in the patient horizontal section his lie on the back yeah you can see the level of fluid this is the upper level of fluid and this is completely maxillary sinus filled by the some kind of fluid so all uh, sinus are uh, filled with fluid yeah all sinus because no. of inflammation yeah instead of some small uh, area here this is the, the the still emptiness and here you can see let me let me again draw this by green color this is the mucus a thick thick and inflammatory you can you can compare the wall of maxillary sinus here and the wall of maxillary sinus there it's thick inflammated here the swelling of the mucus we have this this is the maxillitis hemorrhitis how it looks like in the ct scan okay uh after interruption i take 5 minutes because of my four voices i need to take a break 5 minutes okay sir okay. but here the same uh, similar cases not the same similar cases but on the frontal section now on the frontal section now and again before you go and to answer on the question what is that you have to build the bony design of the skull and you have to be uh, to be ensure this is the frontal bone area yes yeah. here we can find the zygomatic bone zygomatic here we can find the ethmoidal bone ethmoidal bone inferior nasal cone maxilla ciliary after that you go and to understand what's happened and you can see that on the left side it's okay for you for this is the right side for the patient on this side it's completely filled by the mucus moreover 